So, uh, <coughs> uh, Glenda uh, Feitoafe uh, is a home care worker from Lacey, Washington, a wife and a mother of three grown children. Glenda has provided personal care to seniors, people with disabilities for 11 years. In her work as a home caregiver, she helps with cooking, cleaning, bathing, dressing, and transferring. Currently, she cares for a 47-year-old quadriplegic man who has six children. She's a, a leader in her local union, the SEIU Local 775, the long-term workers union in, in Washington State. Glenda, how do you do it? Tell us. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Glenda Fatwafe, and I've been providing care and support for seniors with disabilities for 11 years. Each day I arrive at Septe's home, and we begin his daily routine. It starts with relieving his bowel and bladders. I'm sorry. Um, that includes an internal catheter and a bowel program which is quite invasive for a grown man with a disability. I then prepare and assist him in eating his breakfast. His wife, Gigi, and I get the shower ready. It takes four separate transfers to get him in and out of the shower. After we've gently put him back into bed, I have to rub him down with creams, check for hot spots to prevent bed sores, and then over an hour's worth of range of motions for his muscles that are contracted into the fetal position. Then it's time to get dressed. What a feat it is. Every two hours, I need to reposition Zepte's body and check his blood pressure. If it reaches a dangerous level, either high or low, I need to quickly assess what might be causing this and take action. It requires fast thinking and an intimate knowledge of Zepti's unique needs. It's only because I've assist assisted him for almost two years that I have a thorough understanding of his medical history and can deliver such vital quality care. Unfortunately, this kind of close relationship and continuity is, is rare. This is the needed quality care that we need in our United States. Turnover among caregivers is very high, between 40 and 60 percent annually, and it's because of the low wages and lack of benefits. Many co clients are constantly training new workers and learning to trust them over and over again. I love the work I do. I have become very close to Zepte and Gigi and their six children. They treat me like a member of their family. The kids even gave me a Mother's Day card last year, or this past year. It really touches my heart and reminds me of how important my work is in their lives. Not just Septis, but his children and his wife. But a home care work is not easy. It's often a physically and emotionally demanding job, requiring not just lifting and transferring, but compassion love, and patience, not just for the client, but for the family. It's not a punch-in and punch-out job. If someone needs additional assistance, caregivers are the ones that provide it and are oftentimes not compensated. So we work more hours than we're paid for. It's a job with few benefits, such as sick and vacation time. Many have no health insurance. I make $10.12 an hour but only thanks to the collaborated effort of my fellow union members during bargaining. The average worker makes around $8 an hour, and rarely can they find 40 hours to work in a week. In my family, we've made big sacrifices. On such a meager salary, we don't take vacations, we don't drive new cars, and we can only afford to send one of my three children to college. Home care workers provide the important care that allow people to live independently but we struggle to make ends meet and oftentimes are forced to find a better paying job. Both client and workers struggle for backup systems. If I can't make it into work to Zepde's house, it's almost impossible to find backup. There's not enough caregivers trained effectively to fill my shoes. Without my assistance, Zepde would have a limited life. 
he would not be able to live in his home and watch his six children grow up or participate in the significant events in their lives, like seeing his second great child perform in a school play or his youngest graduate kindergarten this year. Without me, he would just be a father in a nursing home and not the dad who helps raise them and gives them guidance in their lives. I'm sorry. Like a lot of Americans, Septi worked hard and enjoyed spending time with his family. He had a good job with health benefits and a 401k plan. He'd been able to start saving for retirement and the purchase of their first home. But then the terrible car accident came two years ago. It left him paralyzed and unable to provide for himself or his family. He had to spend all of his savings, leaving Medicare as the only option left for him to get the assistance he needed. But he fears losing this Medicaid eligibility for the critical services that he gets. His family has to remain poor. His wife worked at a child care provider, but because they need to stay poor to maintain the eligibility, and because she needs to be on call for the backup care on the night shift and the high turnover that we have, she's limited her hours and then eventually had to stop working altogether. Medicaid funded home and community-based services provide the cost-effective assistance seniors and people with disability need to live at home. But I don't think it should be the only re reasonable way to access the services. People should not have to enter in and remain in poverty to get the needed assistance. We need to invest more in home and community-based services, and the CLASS Act is the one step to improvement to the lives of seniors and people with disability. If the CLASS Act existed, Zepte would not have had to spend all of his savings and put his family in jeopardy to be eligible for Medicaid. Whether you're young or old, one day you may need long-term care and the choice to live at home without spinning down into poverty should be available to everyone in America. We need to expand the choices of this growing population who needs in-home care. Congress should take step to ensure people have a range of options when it comes to community support and services. Creating an affordable national insurance pro program like the CLASS Act will enable people to prepare for the likelihood of becoming disabled, especially as we age. As the baby boomer generation ages, thousands of caregivers like me are going to be needed to provide the one-on-one -on -one personal care that gives people the choice and the freedom to live at home. Class Act would provide additional resources to improve wages and benefits so we can recruit and retain stable professional workforce of dedicated caregivers to provide the quality care we can all count on. Congress should act, enact the CLASS Act to ensure that good jobs for workers like me and quality care for consumers like SEPTE. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, uh, Glenda. That's an extraordinary uh, story and uh, your commitment and dedication is uh, really uh, uh, truly inspirational, and thank you for all the good things that you do. Hey, Senator, this is my family. I take care of uh, There you go. Yeah, we got them right up here. We'll very, you can see the, how they look at you about the difference that you make in their lives. So we thank you so much. Making thank it. you.